This is going to be the neck. I'm going to make the head. The head is formed by taking this tip and folding it back down. When you fold it down, you want to line up the center crease of the head with the center crease of the neck. So just fold it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And get it again, get a good crease. You can, if, you're, if you don't like the, how, uh, how big or how small your head turns out to be, you can always go back and fix it. This is a simpler yeah. model, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So, when, <coughs> when you get to that point, feel free to fold the whole thing in half. Okay. So you should have something that looks like this. Yeah, just like that. You have several layers of paper, so be gentle. But you do want to make sure that the creases on the top, creases on the bottom, are all nice and sharp. In fact, uh, you might want to even take a fingernail and just run it down. Okay. The, t the head might pop up a little bit, that's okay. Because what we're going to do next is grab and pull it up. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pull it up. And when, a, when the crease matches the back, okay, so you got a good crease here, just go ahead and squash everything down. And as always, you can, if you don't like the neck pointing, leaning forward, you can scoot it back a little bit and then, okay, so you see how the crease line matches the back. All right, and you can bring the head out a little bit, but this is the traditional swan. I, you know, this one, my head's uh, neck's going a little forward more than I like. I like my little back, so I'll just, you know, personal preference, right? This is yours. This is your swan, and you can call it what you want. So let me, how'd yours turn out? Something's wrong. <laughs> no, no, nothing is wrong. You see, you're, okay, what happened was this piece popped out, uh, so it's offering some resistance, and that happens uh, too. It's sort of like all things in life. <laughs> Somebody is always getting in the way offering resistance. So <laughs> you just gotta, you know, and this is where if you're having one of those frustrated days, you just, <laughs> you get it down, okay? And get that, get that neck crease in, yeah. And then just run your finger along, whoop. Just run your fold right oh, there, nice. and that will lock it in place and keep it going. Everybody else, you need, uh, you doing okay? I think so. You think so? Is he supposed to be so tipsy? Well, in this case, if he is tipsy, back the neck. Put oh, the neck okay. back a little so bit. Okay. So you keep that center of gravity. Right? Okay, great. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where your swan's <laughs> been. He could be tipsy. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's 9.30, but who knows what your swan's been up to last night. Drunk with new wine. There you go. Yeah, drunk with new wine. There you go. Now, something like this, it's a, it's a simple form. Obviously, for the first time, you know, you, you may, it may have been unfamiliar. But it gets in your memory, you fold it a couple times, and you just focus on it. And as you focus, blood pressure drops, heart rate drops. It's just creating a new thing. And the neat thing about using magazine pages, one, they're everywhere. Circulars, junk mail, things like that. But did you notice the words in the picture? Everything becomes kind of jumbled up. So it doesn't really matter what it was because the interplay of picture and word and things like that sometimes creates really neat designs. In fact, some of the origami paper I've purchased, I just thought it was neat. It's old, old pictures, right, that they printed on thin paper. Old um, ones, Japanese paintings. Um, but of course, when you fold it, it doesn't look like the painting, but all the colors of the swirls. Um, Shan, who, who has been sort of a wrangler for this conference. Uh, she loves roosters. I have no idea why she's into roosters. I folded her a rooster, and I used one of these pictures uh, that people with a picture on it. 
And when I uh, folded it for her, the picture was all jumbled up, but the color was amazing. And the interplay of all the designs, the line work was amazing. So experiment, experiment, experiment. Now, one of the things you're doing, mm -hmm. you created a very small one. And so you could create a small swan out of that. Gas station receipts, you know, you, you pump your gas. <laughs> Leanna and I were on a, a road trip with our family. And I, we pulled off, I pumped the gas. She took my, our son in to, to use the bathroom. I got the receipt out. She drives, I'm in the passenger seat as navigator, but you're on the turnpike for hours, so it, it, there's nothing to navigate. I'm sitting there, do 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 with a little gas station. I had a, a Dove, which we'll do at the end, and a crane and something else. And recycle at the end, it's a way to relax, okay? So that's what we're doing now. We'll make the expense report more interesting. <laughs> Church treasury. <laughs> Before you came in, I talked about yeah, you know, bolted insurance, whatever <laughs> expense reports. Hear what I think about that, nasty Greg. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it's a neat way to be passive aggressive too. You know, it's like yeah, if somebody puts a note. I was at a church once, and somebody uh, put a put a note on the pulpit that they objected to my use of the word kids. Because he said, goats have kids. These are children. Well, that little note became a little flower, right? And and I was like, I had a rose city. I turned it into a rose. And, and somebody, you know, it, it, you, do, you can do these things. And it puts you in a better place. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, symbols involved. So in uh, 